Well, in the 1860s, during the Civil War, John Malin Marlin was learning and, and applying himself to the tool and die maker's trade at, of all places, Colt Firearms. But Marlin had some ideas about guns that he wanted to build uh, eventually. And sure enough, when the war finished, he devised one of the first lever actions to bear the Marlin name. In 1870, starting the Marlin Company, and then in 1881, began with his first lever action design. In 1881, Marlin introduced a large lever action repeater that would handle the 4570 cartridge and the large cartridges uh, uh, that had that extra power level over the cartridges manufactured for the Winchester model 1876. And uh, five years after the introduction of the Winchester 76, the Marlin 81 jumped right in there and became the premier gun in that particular slot. Now this Marlin model 1881 was based on a design by Anthony Burgess. Due to the era it was introduced, it was really probably the uh, only lever action repeater that made a really good buffalo gun at the end of the buffalo hunting era. The years following uh, the introduction and the initial success of the model 1881 were very, very prolific for the Marlin Company. Uh, they introduced a series of lever action rifles beginning with the 1885, continuing through the 1886, 1887, 1888, 1889, 1891, 1892, 1893, and 1895. They were nearly on a gun of a year track. What was happening was the, the Marlins were continuing uh, to grow, to be uh, improved upon and to be refined. Uh, one of the guns that's still fairly re relevant today uh, was really a pistol caliber gun. That was the Marlin Model 1894. And the 1894, uh, of course, had a solid top receiver that's a hallmark of the majority of Marlin designs. Uh, and its bolt was actually, uh, you, you could see the bolt move. Uh, it was actually integral with the side of the receiver when the gun was closed. You open the bolt, drop the lever, and the bolt comes back. That changed in the model 1895. So the 1895 had a solid receiver and when the lever was worked, the bolt would move rearward, cocking the hammer, ejecting a spent cartridge, and then as the lever is closed, the bolt goes forward and of course locks. John Marlin was a bit of a visionary, and he saw that smokeless powder was going to make a huge impact on firearms design, and that it was going to call for a new, stronger lever-action rifle using stronger steel, but that there would be a demand for this. So in 1893, he introduced his model 1893. It was a lever-action model that was chambered for cartridges in the 3030 Winchester class. Now note that this is one year before Winchester introduced their famous model 1894. Marlin was just a small step ahead on that curve for uh, uh, the smokeless powder hunting cartridge lever action. And in fact, the model 1893 became the Marlin Model 36 in 1936, uh, name changed again to the 336 in uh, 1948, but it remained an incredibly popular uh, American uh, hunting rifle chambered for modern cartridges in smokeless powder. Marlin comes online and accounts for some of these advances in the design of a lever action gun, the side ejection, uh, later on things like micro groove rifling, and really uh, takes the lever action to a new level of capability, uh, especially as, as more modern cartridges came online. So what you have is you have sort of the, the lever action uh, being taken to the height of its form by Marlin at the same time that other companies like Winchester and some other notable companies have essentially begun now to set their sights on the bolt action form and the bolt action rifle as a service rifle that would 
shortly be pressed into service in the coming world wars. There were a lot of innovations with Marlin firearms, one of which was uh, microgroove rifling, uh, which was introduced in 1953. And the theory behind microgroove rifling is, is you have shallow grooves, and, and lots of them, uh, which is fine for a fairly low pressure cartridge uh, like the 3030, uh, which I would imagine the majority of Marlin lever actions have been built upon. But there, there were problems with that microgroove barrel and, and cartridges like the 4570. Uh, Marlin had a history with Ballard, and when they had issues with microgroove and the big guns, they went to Ballard rifling, which is just conventional rifling. So Marlin had this great platform, the Model 1895, and consumers started telling them that they wanted big bore lever guns because the heyday of the 3030 hunting carbine was on the wane, but people were hunting in Alaska, living in Alaska, and they, they wanted big bore lever action guns. And so both Winchester and Marlin responded. And the result, of course, was the Marlin guide gun, uh, which has a short, thick, heavy profile barrel, uh, pretty decent sights that, that Marlin has continued to evolve. But any gun design is subject to the whims of consumers, what people want to buy. And as the market changed, a couple of things happened. Uh, the U.S. Repeating Arms Company, uh, it closed. Uh, it was no longer a profitable, viable manufacturer of uh, Winchester Model 94s. And eventually, it got to the point that Marlin as a company uh, wasn't as profitable as it could be. And so the Kinney family sold Marlin and H&R, who they owned at the same time, uh, to the holding group that also owned the Remington Arms Company. So in 2007, Remington purchases Marlin. And over the course of the, the next two or three years, a difficult transition takes place in which essentially the Marlin plant that had been there for more than 100 years is shuttered. And in the closing of the factory, uh, much of the original DNA to the Marlin bloodline is lost. And so for a couple of years, uh, those, those transitional guns just didn't reflect the kind of uh, handwork and uh, attention to detail that original Marlins did. That has all changed. Uh, having been to that factory and having seen what's happening there now, I can personally attest to the fact that the new Marlins being produced by Remington, without doubt, are closer tolerance, more refined versions of, of the original guns than the original factory was ever able to produce. You know, I, th I think today in Ilion, Marlin is making the best firearm it's made in the time that it's been here in Ilion. It was a very, very big hurdle to overcome, um, and it was one that was slow coming. The lever action platform is a lot more intricate. It was a lot more moving parts as opposed to our, our bolt action platform. On the Marlin side, um, in some of the models, there's over 86 individual parts. Uh, inside of the receiver itself, there's over 20. Um, so it, it's, it's definitely a lot different platform. Um, you know, the intricacies of Marlin's double safety system add a level of complexity and it adds a level of quality and inspection that we have to put through that firearm in order to get it off the line. Um, since, let's see, the last three years, so 2013, every single gun that's gone through the line has gone through a, a rigorous, long uh, retolerancing, redimensioning to eliminate all the interference points that really the old conventional machines couldn't control well. Um, so th that added quality and that added focus to all those small interface points has really smoothed out all those platforms for us. I think I'm happy to say, and I can proudly say that Marlin is back. You know, the, the struggle I think is behind us. Marlin's here, Marlin's gonna stay here, um, and we are going to be the leader in the, in the lever market 